Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our file manager showdown and take a look at Forklift 3 by Binary Knights. Now Forklift is another FTP application uh, similar to what we saw in the previous screencast with Transmit 5. And it does some similar things uh, in different ways and has a couple of different features as well. So let's take a look at the interface. So here we are inside of Forklift 3, and what you'll notice is that it's very similar to the Finder. It has similar elements that we're used to. You notice we have a sidebar over here that shows us all of our different devices, shared devices and favorites, uh, very similar to what we're used to seeing inside of the Finder. And then we've got this two-pane view over here that shows us uh, two different uh, areas that we're looking at. And you can see that we can then go in and use tabs across the top here as well. So if I wanted to add a tab, I could add a tab in here, switch it to something else. And so now I can do some tab browsing. And I can do that all the way across over here as well and have more tabs up there. So it does allow for that. If I just want to close a tab, I just click closed and it disappears. So that's great. Now, a couple of other things I can do is I've got similar features across the top. The toolbar lets me do most of the things that I need to do. Uh, I can view it uh, right here where I can drop to have a drop down to see what's inside. I can go here to the three pane view. I can view them as icons if I want to do that. So let's go ahead and have it viewed that way. Uh, I can also arrange how the windows look. So I've got these dual panes side by side, but I can also put them above and below if I want to do it that way and make it easier. And I can also go to one pane view right here just by clicking this. So let's go ahead and put this back. Now, I've also got across the top some other options. You can see here I can sort by kind, date, that sort of thing. I can also view invisible uh, items just like I could with Transmit 5. I can add new folders and delete. And then I've got here is where I would do the connect uh, to my different file shares. I've got a favorites area that will show favorites that I've got. And then there's different actions I can take on my uh, different items depending on what I have selected. And then there's an other, other things across the top. There is a terminal view. So if I wanted to open a terminal window, I can do that right inside of Forklift 3. Uh, I've also got uh, some uh, comparison uh, items here, sync browsing, and then get info on different items, which will open up the window. And then this is just my activities area that shows the file transfer items. Okay, so that shows you how this works and what that looks like. Now, a couple of things. First of all, let's take a look at the favorites area. If I just click on favorites, it brings up my various favorites here. As you can see, I've got my Bonjour areas here, as well as other favorites like iCloud Drive and Dropbox and all of that. And I've added a couple other ones like a uh, my local server uh, connection to a particular folder and then my website connection. You'll notice that these things are mirrored over here on the side, so they do show in the sidebar. Now, if I wanted to hide the sidebar uh, to make it look similar to, let's say, what we see in Transmit, I just need to do Option Command S and it will hide the sidebar. And so as you can see now we're just dealing with the two pane view and, uh, and that's it. Or I can do Option Command S and it will bring the sidebar back. So uh, again you can kind of customize it the way you want to view it but you can see all the different options that I've got over here. Now if I wanted to uh, add a connection and get started with that I would just come over here to the lightning bolt and it would bring me into the connection area. And as you can see here, if I just uh, click on this, these are the different connections that are available inside of Forklift 3. You can see I've got an SFTP connection, FTP, FTP with TLS, WebDAV, WebDAV with HTTPS, and this comes in handy with your uh, Mac OS server. Uh, for those of you that will use a WebDAV, a WebDAV connection, you can also use FTP. Uh, we've got Amazon S3, Rackspace, and then here's AFP and SMB, which we do have uh, also on our servers and then you have NFS as well. So let's just let's look at AFP for a second. So if I go to AFP uh, I can go ahead and set up a connection. Now uh, what I've got is I've got a server on my local network so if you're on your local network it's just going to be server.local here but if uh, if you were doing a remote connection yeah, let me just go ahead and cancel for a second. If you're doing a remote connection uh, you would do you know your server.example let's say uh, dot com and then put your credentials in. So it's up to you on which one you would need to use but again if you were remote that's what you would do. In our case since it's a local connection I'm just going to say server.local. Uh, I can put in my username and password in here or I can leave it blank and then I've got my port and local path. 
Now, what I can do here too is I can hide that other information or show it. And then in here, I can add it to my favorites. Now, if I click Add to Favorites, notice I've got the server.local here. I can, I can put it in the favorites area. And what it will do is show up over here with whatever I've named it. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and do a, con a connect to show you. So if I just hit connect, you'll notice that I'm already logged in with my uh, user credentials. Those were already saved when I connected to server down here. But notice it shows me all my different files that are available on the server. And then I can just pick the file to mount. So let's just say I want to mount that one. I'd say OK. And so now it's mounted that file files. And you can see it's showing right here. And it's got the information that's inside of it. Now, one of the things to note is that when I do click on a particular document, I will get uh, on the side over here a preview of that document with all the different information there in terms of uh, the permissions and that sort of thing. If I want to view that uh, large, if I want to make the changes to it, then I can just hit this I here for info and then it brings up the information I need to be able to change ownership and permissions and all of that information on there. So let me just go ahead and close that. Uh, so that's how that works, and that's what this side pane over here is all about. Now, if I ever want to remove a, a particular um, item here, I just unmount it by hitting this right here, and then it takes me right back to where I was, and that's all set. Okay, now as we did in the previous screencast, we want to transfer some files to a remote location. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and come in here and mount my website like we did before, just double-clicking on it. You can see it loads it, and there's my website. And you can see I've got these two folders right here. I've got the test delete folders. One has pictures in it and one doesn't. Now there's a few things that I can do here uh, with this. I can hit the sync option uh, to sync between the two folders. You can see it says nothing to sync there. I'm just going to hit cancel. But if I select uh, a file here and then hit sync, it'll show me the different files that are not in this particular uh, folder and it's showing me that it's going to sync them all this way. Now I can say sync from left to right, sync from right to left, or both ways so that we have uh, a joint sync going both directions so that if I make any changes here it'll make it over here as well. And I can say add items, update them, sync subfolders, sync hidden folders, all of that sort of thing. And if I hit save or sync then it'll start to sync them and it'll bring them over. I can also do the same thing with drag and drop if I wanted to do that as well. But let's go ahead and hit sync. And so what it's going to do is go through its sync process. And you can see here in the status bar that it's going to sync those three items that it's preparing and it's starting to move them over. And now there's no activities because it's done. But now you can see that we've got them in sync, right? They're all together. Uh, if I come back into the sync area, you can see there's nothing to sync. If I say both ways, I can save this. And I can, I can save it as a uh, favorite uh, group if I want to do that. Let me just save it as sync. And I'll just keep it in favorites and add it. And uh, then we're done. And so we're just going to keep it just like that. And so now I've got this sync area over here in favorites that I can always bring up. Okay, now another thing that I can do is I can select this, uh, these items here. And I can also do a batch rename. And so if I just uh, control click on this, you can see I can rename the three items. So I can also compress them into um, a, a zip file. But let's just go ahead and say rename the three items. And I get this nice renamer here. And it's going to show me the before and after. I can apply it to the name or name with extension, that sort of thing. I can choose the occurrences. And I'm just going to say entire text. And then I'm going to type in a word here. Let's just say uh, Yosemite. And you can notice here, it says, oh, I got a problem because all the files are going to be named the same. So if I just uh, hit the plus here, I can add a sequence. I can add dates and that sort of thing as well. Let's just go ahead and add a sequence. It's going to start with one. And you can see now it's corrected at one, two, and three. And so I can say rename. I can also add this to favorites if it's something that I normally do. But let's go ahead and say rename. And so now I've renamed these three items, right? So now they have the name Yosemite one, two, and three. Now the other thing that I can do across these two files is I can compare uh, different images. So if I just select, let's say, let's say I select this image and I've got this image selected. And so now I'm going to just come up here and hit the, hit the compare item. And now you need to have um, Xcode running for this to happen. And you can see here that it does it at the file level to look at everything to see if there's any differences. And the status is it came up with zero differences. And you see I've got some actions down here if there were some issues or I could go in and edit. Uh, but again, it's just at the file level to see if I've got an exact copy. Now let's go ahead and uh, put that down there. So that's another feature that's there. 
Uh, there is synced browsing when you've got uh, identical uh, structures. You can sync the browsing so that uh, what you're looking at on the right side will show on the left side as well. And so that gives you an idea of some of those uh, features that are there inside of Forklift 3. Now let's take a look at uh, another feature that's added. So instead of having uh, the droplets on the desktop like we saw with Transmit 5, uh, Forklift has a menu item that does a similar thing. So if you've got a remote server that's mounted, which we do here, if I just come up to the toolbar, you can see I got the Forklift icon. And if I just click on that, you can see that I've got my favorites for website and for sync, where I can actually sync the items across. And so if I just hit sync, you know, then all of a sudden it's going to want to start that. And I'll say always allow. And you can see that it prepares the sync and starts to do the sync back and forth. And you'll notice that uh, it's starting to add the items that are missing here because it's doing the compare from one side to the other. And because I changed the name, you can see that it's syncing these items back because it is different, okay? Because it's going to try to keep the same items in the folder. And so you can see it's still doing its sync. And now it's done. So it's let me know that it's sunk it this direction because that's how I had it set up. Uh, the other thing I can do if I come up here with my website is I can mount uh, the... Uh, website as a disk that will show up in the finder and in the sidebar. Uh, in order to do that, let me just click on that. As you'll see, in order to do that, I need to have Fuse for Mac OS. And so you can get Fuse and download it and have that work. I'm just going to cancel that for right now. Uh, or what you can do is you can come in here and open it and as a droplet. And so if I open this as a droplet, you'll see that I get this little drop area. And if I just grab a file like this one here and I just drop it in that little droplet area, uh, it will start the upload process and you can see that it's uploading it now to my web server to that uh, test delete folder and so it's going to start the process of uploading that so we're going to go ahead and let that uh, upload and when it's done i'll show you what it looks like okay so as you can see the file has uploaded here it is inside my uh, remote site so it was uploaded it's the same picture there that we had with the same name and all of those features uh, that we had for this particular file. So as you can see, uh, the upload works right through that little droplet that's up in the menu bar. And it's just a different way of doing uh, the same thing that you see over in Transmit 5. So as you can see, uh, both of these applications have similar features. Uh, they do these things in different ways and handle them uh, with a different interface. Uh, so it gives you an idea of whether or not this type of interface is more efficient for you than the Transmit 5 one, but that just shows you a little bit of a comparison. Uh, we're going to go ahead and compare a couple other ones as well and just do this nice overview so that you can get an idea of which ones you might want to use uh, for your own needs. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.